I love a fun video that gets me all excited and makes me want to sing. But is what I'm watching really going to help me sing better? Or is it purely for entertainment? Hey, welcome to the Monique on the Mic podcast. I'm your host, Monique B. Thomas. This show is your go-to resource for professional and aspiring singers. Every Monday, join me for a mix of solo episodes and insightful interviews where I share real artist stories, practical strategies, and mindset shifts. Whether you're just starting out or are already on your journey, you'll find the tools you need to transform your vocal path and feel supported. I keep it real, I keep it fun, and it's always useful and up-to-date. Let's get into it. Before I get started, I must issue a bit of a rant alert. This is something that's been on my heart and on my mind for a very long time, and as an educator, I think it's important to talk about these things. So I might not, I might make some enemies and I'm okay with that because I stand by what I say, but here we go. I think it's really cool that with a click of a button, we have access to so much information. And at the same time, information overwhelm has never been so prevalent. How do we truly navigate what we find on the net in order to discern what is good and right for us and what is not? Here's a few things I want you to look at and think about when consuming content about singing. Number one, does the person really know what they're talking about, or are they simply persuasive storytellers? Can you tell the difference? You see, there's these celebrity, and I'm using air quotes, uh, vocal coaches out there, and some of them are celebrities not because they actually know how to teach singing. It's just that they have this great personality, and they're exciting to watch, and they're fun, and they have these gimmicks. And that's what makes them a celebrity, rather than being a celebrity for their actual coaching ability. See, I have friends in the business who are coaching some of our favorite artists like Rihanna or Justin Timberlake, and they are celebrity coaches, but they're actually coaching. They actually know what they're doing, and that's, that's a difference. And it happens also that they have great personalities as well. But the persuasive person can make you think that they know more than they actually know. So my question to you is, where's the proof that the person that you're watching actually knows what you're talking, what they're talking about? One of the ways is, do you like the way they sing? Because let's be honest, this is all going to be based on what your standard of singing is. So hopefully you have a high standard of singing, but this all has to match. Do you like the sounds that they are making? Um, Do their students? Do you like the sounds the students are making? You got to look at that because if that doesn't match, then something's amiss. It has to match. They have to be doing something. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to like their artistry, but just their singing process, the way that they sing, um, their sound making, it has to fit with you. Now, let's be clear here. You might not like the way somebody's voice sounds, but you should be able to recognize if it's done in a healthy and sustainable way. So I want you to just take a look at that and um, let's move on to point number two. Number two, does the post or video present principles or strong unfounded opinions? Firstly, let's define what principles are. From the Oxford Dictionary, a principle is a fundamental truth or proposition that serves as the foundation for a system of belief or behavior for a chain of reasoning, that word reasoning. An example of a singing principle that I stand by is that technique should afford the singer both control and freedom under all situations, meaning all vowel and consonant combinations, all parts of the individual's voice, including and especially in the bridges, and at all dynamics. So the question would be, does what you're seeing in a video hold up to this? Often what I see in videos is someone demonstrating an exercise in a very limited range. And so what that means is you can't test the theory that their principle is working. You'd have to see, does that exercise hold true in other parts of the voice and under different conditions? But I think the other thing that we need to look at is why the exercise? See, we've got people giving out exercises and we don't actually know what the exercise does. And I'll be honest with you, oftentimes people say the exercise is meant to do one thing 
and it actually might do another thing. And not knowing what an exercise is for and how to apply it might actually do you more harm than good. Number three, do you actually like what you hear, or are you just impressed with how loud or how high something is? All right, so again, I know I'm going to ruffle some feathers on this one, and I'm okay with that. But again, you've got these coaches online, and they're demonstrating something. And usually, it's just sort of an outrageous sound. For me, it's just kind of, it's sound making, it's noise making, but I don't consider sound making and noise making to be singing unless it's done artfully. A lot of times it's just noise. So go back and listen to some of these videos and think to yourself, is that a sound that I'd like to make? Because if that's not a sound you'd like to make, well, you shouldn't be using it. You shouldn't be aspiring to it. You shouldn't be copying it. Are you just impressed by the fact that that's, wow, that's just really, really loud? Okay, loud's great. And sometimes we need loud. If we sing gospel, rock, soul, R&B, we need to have dynamics in our music. But just loud is not enough information. It's not enough quality to actually want to do that in your own singing. So I want you to be careful about, I want you to listen better. I want you to go through what you're hearing with a fine-tooth comb. Re-listen to all these videos that you like and, and see if it's really qualitative rather than just being, you know, wow, that person can sing that one note out of context really loud. Because that's the other thing. We're talking about singing here. We're not just talking about singing a note, but actually singing a song. And I think because we're so used to short-form videos, where we've got 15 or 30 second sound bites and people can do something amazing for a sound bite, that is actually not singing. You're not making a career by singing 30 second sound bites. You actually have to maintain whatever it is you're doing over a span of three to four minutes or more. And if you're, you know, really going at it, then a whole concert. So we're talking an hour and a half. We have to make sure that that sound making process not only holds up vocally for an entire uh, concert, but is it something that the audience would want to listen to for an hour and a half? Number four, does the content actually make you a sustainably better singer? So, in other words, the content that you're consuming, whether it's um, from a blog post or video or whatever, in any form that you get it, can you actually take that information and apply it to yourself and it truly makes you a better singer? Or is it just, oh, wow, that's cool. See, there's a difference again. We're trying to build a voice here, a voice that can be used artistically. We're not just trying to do cool tricks with our voice. So is that information really going to make a huge and lasting change in your voice? Or is it purely vocal science? And I have nothing against voice science. Voice science has its place. Voice science is there to help define what it is that we're actually doing. But here's the thing, whether you know what you're doing or not, that thing is going to happen, whether you put a name on it, whether voice science describes it or not, the thing that you're doing is going to happen. I think the problem is that people are using voice science to then determine what we should be doing. And the thing is, we had great singers well before voice science became a huge thing. There are singers that absolutely knew nothing about voice science and Yet, they sing great. So my thing is, voice science is there, and it's great. It can help describe what we're doing if it's done accurately. Um, and that's sometimes even debat debatable because you'd have to study all types of singers under all types of conditions, and that's often not the case. Often, voice science is skewed to one type of singing than another, which means it's not a full and complete picture of vocalism, of singing. So that's, that's another side note. But again, if you like voice science and you like to geek out about it, that's great. But I'm talking about information that is going to allow you to apply it to become a better singer. Number five, was any post-production used to make the person sound like they're doing something different than what they actually did? 
Um, you might not know this, but today a lot of live videos, even videos you'll see somebody in concert, and it, and it's on YouTube um, or or wherever you're watching the video. Post production was applied to it. Post production that that video went through post production to take out any um, things that you know, just don't favor the artist. So you can do pitch correction. You can make the voice sound less harsh, you know, things like that. Um, let's say it, when people sing overly loud or literally are yelling, you can make it seem so that the voice is a lot smoother than it actually is. Because the truth is when you when you do a complete yell, the voice is going to lose greatly its vocal quality. And so sometimes people are yelling to get the pitches. The pitch is flat, and so they pitch correct. And then uh, it's also harsh, so so they'll they'll do something in the studio to attenuate or take out or lessen the harshness in the voice so that you think that that production is smooth, easy, and in tune. And in fact, it's not. Now, technology is cool, but we have to be very vigilant when we watch these videos. Post-production magic can fix a lot of problems. And so you've got to be aware that that's happening. Let's say somebody is working from the premise that you can just yell your chest up as high as you want to go without any consequences. Well, if they demonstrate that, they are obviously going to have to use post-production magic to make it seem like that that's a thing to do. And I'll be honest with you, I think that's very dishonest. If post-production comes into play, uh, with videos that are supposed to be instructional, then they owe the listener a disclaimer that I use post production to give my um, to give this a quality, because otherwise they're making it look like what they're teaching you gives you the result that you heard, and that's not fair. That's not fair at all. Um, I'm not saying that post production isn't necessary. I'm saying it has its place. Please don't confuse this with audio recordings. Audio recordings are meant for entertainment. So that's different. We would not expect any of our great artists to put out an album with no post-production. In fact, we probably couldn't listen to it because we're used to albums having some sort of smoothness and, you know, being clean in their sound. But in an educational video, if we're using post-production in any way, to correct flaws in the voice, um, then I think we have to call it, we have to call a foul here. Number six, ask yourself this question. In other fields, how is expertise gained? Well, the question would be, how do doctors get their license to practice? What about lawyers? What about pilots? Let's say you wanted to learn to ice skate. You could go to a rink and have a friend teach you as much as they possibly can. And you'll probably make some progress to a point. You might then find a YouTube video or two that might bring awareness to a particular issue you might be having. And after a certain amount of time, you'll hit a roadblock that you cannot fix without proper instruction. This is a turning point because it makes you have to decide if this activity is just for fun, which means you have no desire to do the necessary things like study and practice in order to get better. And that is okay. Or you really want to get to the next level and you'll search out the best teacher in order to do so. Let's just be clear. I am not judging you for deciding that this activity, which is singing, is a hobby. I'm simply asking you to be honest and clear with yourself about your intentions. See, if you say, I want to be the best singer that I can possibly be, but you're treating it as a hobby, you're setting yourself up for failure and frustration. Anybody that wants to do something means they're going to dedicate themselves to it, and that means that dedication lasts through the initial first couple weeks of motivation where everything seems cool to do. When you're dedicated to something, you work through the ups and downs of it. You work through, okay, I'm kind of over that initial excitement. It's kind of like, you know, a, a love relationship when that when the butterflies wear off, then we get to know if we're really into this thing. And so it's the same thing with singing. If you're saying you're dedicated to singing, 
and I get people in my DMs all the time telling me how dedicated they are to singing, and they won't take a lesson, and it doesn't make sense to me. And yeah, I know that there's so much out there, and I know it seems like it's well-meaning, but to be honest with you, you've got to go and find somebody who actually knows what they're talking about, but also who knows how to apply it to you. The other problem with all this information that's out there is it can be very generic. It is not all uh, one size fits all. Some of the information needs to be given to you in a particular order. In other words, learning things out of order can really screw you up in your singing because it might have you doing things that you're actually not ready to do, which then is going to put you off your uh, track. It's going to set you back a bit because you haven't quite learned the basics. Now, if you've heard me ever talk about learning the basics, I'm always saying learning the basics, learn the basics. Understand that learning the basics simply means on a basic level, at a medium volume, and at a moderately slow tempo, I can do the things I need to do to get my voice smooth and even. And the only other thing that we're ever going to do to become more advanced is do exactly the same thing, but faster, maybe louder, and smoother. Faster, louder, smoother. But it's got to start smooth. And in order to start there, it's got to be done slowly, usually. That's all it is. There's really nothing more um, advanced than that. It's just being able to do the same thing under, let's say, more strenuous conditions. How smooth can your voice be when you're singing fortissimo? How smooth can your voice be when you're singing at an extremely fast tempo or you're singing at a high, um, you're singing very high in your voice, or let's say you're going through your entire voice? Does it all hold up? That's all there is to it. You just have to be clear about your intentions and what it is you're trying to do. And once you've figured out that, then I'm urging you to take a different action plan in order to get to your goals. So here's what I feel should be some takeaways. We as consumers need more discernment in one type of information we consume concerning the voice, including video, social media posts, and what we listen to. While these things may be helpful at a specific moment, we cannot efficiently learn how to sing solely from video, social media posts, and listening to music, or even reading a book. Is what you are consuming merely making you feel good about singing, which would be entertainment, or is it actually helping you to sing better? Is your desire merely for the fun, or do you really want to learn how to sing better? The truth is that we cannot truly learn how to sing from watching videos and reading posts. While listening to the right singers is crucial to your process because it sets the standards of what you will aspire to, even listening alone won't do it. You have to be very specific about what vocal qualities you're wanting to emulate and not confuse that with the quality of the songwriting and or production. In other words, the voices you listen to must be of great quality in order to be considered to be worthy of your time. As it pertains to your vocal education, it should be fun. However, it must always include education. If you're just having fun and you're not making any improvement, make no mistake, What you're doing is for entertainment purposes only. But I think ideally, it should be both. It should be edutainment. Singing should be fun and educational. Now, I never like to shed light on a problem without offering a solution. The solution is to study with a professional, someone who has a proven track record with students and their own singing. That person is, you guessed it, me. It's back to school time, and it's time to prioritize your singing goals now. I'm currently opening for booking for one-to-one sessions, workshops, master classes, and group coachings. Let's say uh, you are a group of students wanting to learn to sing jazz, R&B, or gospel. These are just a few examples of what I teach. You can actually book me for a group coaching session and simply split the price because I know I know this is all very expensive. Life is expensive. So you guys can get together and contact me and split the price of learning something from me uh, in your own time. This can be done online or in person. Also, if you're a teacher and you want your students to learn certain skills, I'm available for travel. You want to hurry because my calendar does tend to fill up fast. You can send all your inquiries to info at moniquebthomas.com.
If you've enjoyed this episode, please don't forget to subscribe and leave a review wherever you listen to podcasts. If you're really liking what I'm throwing down, you'll love my Mic Masters newsletter. For more information on how to work with me and to sign up for the newsletter, visit www.uniquebthomas.com or check the show notes. Basically, Monique.